Well, hello everybody and welcome back. Uh, today's modification we're going to install an automatic transfer switch. We have a plan to upgrade our power systems in our 2019 Winnebago view. These changes involve lithium batteries, a larger inverter, an automatic generator starter, an automatic transfer switch, and a hardwired EMS to replace our portable EMS. Today what we're going to tackle is the automatic transfer switch. So why do we need a power transfer switch and what does it do? For us we have a, a bigger power management strategy in mind in which this switch plays a key role in ensuring that the RV always has power available. Stay tuned for future videos. For the short term the switch just simplifies our power connection. It maybe saves a little wear and tear on the plug because we don't have to plug it back into the generator outlet when we need to use generator power. In essence, with the automatic transfer switch installed, we are always connected to the generator. The switch is generator bias, which means that if the switch detects power coming from the generator, it will automatically switch to that power source. Originally, the shore power cable leads to this junction box in our electrical bay. The shore power cable simply joins to the Romex wire that leads directly to the 30 amp circuit breaker in the panel at the foot of our bed. Here you can see where I installed the hardwired EMS. In our G floor plan, there is a removable wall panel under the bed that gives access to the back of the circuit panel. There was ample space behind this panel to mount the hardwired EMS. Installation of the EMS is straightforward. Simply cut the Romex wire coming out of the 30 amp circuit, allowing enough length to make connections. I then connected the cut end that leads to the shore power junction box in the electrical bay to the input side of the EMS. I then connect the other end of the cut Romex that leads to the circuit panel to the output side of the EMS. I'm not going to go into great detail about the EMS installation. Uh, we've got some other changes that are coming that are going to um, impact the hardwired EMS. We'll cover that in another video. So my connections are in this small bay here. So basically this is the, uh, the junction box that connects the uh, shore power cord to the, the electrical panel inside of the, uh, the RV and this is the generator outlet. This is where the generated uh, electricity comes to and this is where I plug my shore power cord into when we want to use the generator. So these two boxes are going to come out of here and the, the source wires for this uh, for the generator output and the shore power connection are going to go into the transfer box and I'll show you that in a minute. So I'm using the Progressive Dynamics PD51100 100 volt transfer switch. So it's a 30 amp switch and basically those two boxes I showed in the uh, in my wet bay are going to be replaced with this box. So it's basically simple, pretty simple wiring. We've got um, the hot and neutral connections that go to my electrical panel in the RV, and then we've got uh, let's see the diagram here. The next thing is the generator hot and the power cord hot so this is the generator hot lead and this is the power cord hot lead and then we have the neutral going to the the panel in the rv and then the neutral from the generator and the neutral from the shore power cord so pretty simple wiring this is just the control panel for my Progressive Industries uh, EMS device, electrical management system device that protects the coach from bad power. If I happen to pe plug into a pedestal that has uh, 
either you know miss bad ground or um, some sort of miswiring. Sometimes the pedestals aren't wired correctly, so this will protect the RV from anything bad happening. So this is just I have it taped here just so I can see it when I plug in. But uh, this is going to come off, and then this box is coming out. I got to take this box out of here. This comes off like that, and I'll. I've already started to remove the wires. These wires here come from the shore power cord. Now that I've disconnected these wires, I can go ahead and take a, take the box out. So that's the next step. Now I've already tested this to make sure that there's no power here. Um, my shore power cord is disconnected. So, so I know that there's no no power coming from there and of course my generator is not running so there's no power come from there so there's no danger of uh, a shock here because there's no power pretty tough working in these tight spaces I just hope this goes well I really don't enjoy working in tight spaces it's frustrating and uh, I guess the best advice I could give is just take it slow and take breaks. I was able to get this, take this wire out. I, it, it, this strain relief connector was blocking the last screw that I needed to remove to take the box out. So I disconnected it and now I should be able to get that last screw out. I then removed the cover to the generator outlet and uh, disconnected the wires that connect the, the outlet to the main line to the generator. Uh, and then I was able to remove the screws from the box and remove that box as well. Before I did anything, I, I laid out where the wires were gonna be connected into the box. I chose the upper right side of the box for the shore power cable. The bottom port would be for the generator cable and the upper left on the top is where the uh, Romex wire from our electrical panel is going to come in. Once the shore power cable was connected, I installed the wire relief connector for the generator wire into the lower right hand hole. It was easy to do it now rather than when the box was inside the tight confines of the electrical bay. Next I placed the box in the general position in the electrical bay where it would be installed. I passed the generator wire and the Romex wire into the box and made the connections. The Wago connectors really simplified making the connections in that tight space. Next I screwed the transfer switch box into the wall. I used the cable clamps to provide more strain relief to each wire so they won't move while traveling down the road. Finally, I had to remount the EMS display in a place where I could see it when plugging into shore power. I screwed it to the side of the transfer switch box. In order to make that work, I had to cut out a small section of the cupboard to make it fit. And that's it. And that's how I installed our automatic transfer switch in our 2019 Winnebago View. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please give us a subscribe. We really appreciate it. Until next time. Have a good day. I'm just gonna drive, drive, drive.